So I want to thank you for joining me today. And today's workshop is Fun and Foundations. We will be taking a look of what you've learned in lesson one. Um, so let's just jump straight into it. If you have any questions throughout, just unmute yourself and ask away. Um, I am unable to see the chat while I'm sharing my screen. So if you're in the chat, I won't be able to answer until the very end. Um, I'd rather you just go ahead and interrupt me, really informal setting. So if you have any questions, just shoot them at me. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. And I'm gonna go ahead and start off in my terminal or command prompt um, and start our project there. So what I wanna go ahead and do is I'm gonna create a new project and I'm gonna open up this project in VS Code, but I'm also going to initialize it with NPM. So prior to this, have installed Node and Visual Studio Code. All right, so now that I am in my terminal, I'm at the very root of my computer. I am gonna go ahead and put everything on my desktop. So first I'm going to change directories into my desktop. And you can see here that I am now in my desktop. And here I'm gonna go ahead and make a new directory. So mkdir. And then I'll just call this front end workshop. So I've gone ahead and created that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and jump into that new directory that I created, front end workshop. And now that I'm in here, I'm going to initialize this directory with NPM. So I'm gonna begin with NPM init. And then we get prompt with a bunch of questions. We can just go ahead and hit enter throughout. Okay, then it's gonna ask if it's okay. I'm gonna say yes. And now I have initialized my project with NPM. The next step where we're gonna do is we're gonna install some dependencies through NPM. We're gonna install Express and React. Um, we're not necessarily gonna use either, but we're just gonna go ahead and install them just for practice here. So npm install express, okay? So these commands are, I'm using npm, I'm gonna install something, and that something is this dependency called express, and then we save it, okay? So space dash dash save. Okay, so that's been taken care of. I'm gonna do the same thing with React. And there we have our dependencies installed here. Okay, so now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and open this project up in Visual Studio Code. So I'm gonna use the command code and then a period, oops, one period. And I'm gonna hit enter and that's gonna open up our directory in Visual Studio Code. So here we have our front end workshop, we have our node modules and our JSON file came from those NPM installs that we did there. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is actually solve a problem here. So at the end of lesson one, you're asked to um, create called number checking and it's gonna check some numbers and depending on what numbers they are, it's gonna output something to the console, okay? So <clears throat> I am gonna go ahead and create the files that I need in order to get this done. So I'm gonna open up my integrated terminal here in VS Code and I can do that by hitting control back tick or I can go to view and then terminal. Either will get you there and then it'll open up this terminal right here. So now that I'm here, I'm gonna create the files that I need. So I'm gonna create my index.html file, and my script.javascript file. So I'm gonna use the command touch because I'm on a Mac. If you're on Mac or Linux, this is the command. Um, if you're on Windows, I believe it's echo. So touch index.html and script. Js. So I'm creating two files there. So here I have my HTML and my JavaScript. 
So I'm going to go ahead and set up my HTML. We're not going to write any actual HTML. Um, we're just going to use the HTML to connect the JavaScript to the HTML so we can open up in the browser and use the console in the browser. I'm also going to show you how you can just do it without the HTML um, and you can just use the console terminal. Um, but we're doing it this way so we can boot up our HTTP server. Okay, so I am just going to add my script tag here. And now I have su successfully connected um, my HTML with my JavaScript. Okay. So if we are creating a function that's going to take in some numbers and going to check those numbers against some values and output something into the console, it's a little bit of a review of what we did in coding from scratch. So remember with JavaScript, anytime we write a function, we're going to write the keyword function and then we are going to follow it by the function name. So I'm just going to call it check numbers. Okay. And then we have our parentheses. In our parentheses is where we would put our parameters. Parameters being information that's passed in into the function in order to get the function to work. Um, so if there are no parameters, then we leave it blank. If there are, then we put what we call those parameters in the parentheses. So I'm gonna check in three numbers. So I'll just have three parameters. Number one, number two, and number three. Okay, and now we have those parameters set, we can begin what this function is going to do. So if I am checking some numbers against some values, uh, what would I want to use? So let's pretend I want to check to see if number one is greater than 100. If it is, then I then we want to console um, dot log. Wow, that's a big number. Okay, and then I want to check to see if number two is less than zero. If it is, then I want to console dot log. That's a negative number. And then we'll check to see if number three is um, an even number. And if it is, then I want to console.log. That's an even number. Okay. So we have three things that we want to check for each number that's passed in. So here, if we are checking a condition to see if something is true or false, and based on if it's true or false, we want a certain action to occur, then that is a big hint that we're going to use what? Hint, we use the word quite often. It's a big hint to use an if statement, okay? So here, I'm gonna set up some if statement. So the first thing I is I want to see if number one is greater than 100. If that's true, then I'm gonna log, wow, that's a big number. So let's set up our if statement. So if number one, and that's coming from here, the parameter that we're passing in, is greater than 100, then I'm going to console.log, wow, that's a big number. Okay. Next, we want to see if number two is less than zero, and if it is, then we're going to console log, that's a negative number. Okay. So another if statement here, if number two 
is less than zero, then I'm going to console.log. That's a negative number. Okay, and what do you think our last one's gonna be? I wanna check to see if number three is an even number. Any ideas? So this one's a little bit difficult. Um, here we are going to use modulus. So number three and then we use a percent sign. And what that does is basically it divides the left hand side by right hand side and then it's going to return the remainder. Okay, so if I want to check to see if something is even, then it has to be divisible by two. Okay, so I'm going to do number three modulus two. Okay, and what that does is going to return the remainder of that number being divided by two. If it's even number, the remainder is going to be zero. If it's not even, then the remainder is going to be anything but zero. Okay, so I'm checking to see if it's even. So I want to check to see if this is equal to zero. Okay, and if that's true, then I'm going to console.log. That's an even number. Put a period here at this one as well. Keep things consistent. And there we have our function. Okay. So now if I want to go ahead and test this function and make sure it works, I need to call on the function and give it some parameters. Okay. So I'm going to call on the function check numbers. And I'm going to pass in some numbers. I'm going to put two. Uh, negative five and let's say 13. Okay, so before I run this, we can go ahead and go through this out loud and see what we should expect the answer to be. Okay, so if number one is equal to two, then when we check it against 100, we're not going to get that's a big number because it's not greater than 100. Okay, when we check number two, which is negative five, I am seeing if it's less than zero. Yes, it is less than zero. I should expect to see that's a negative number, okay? And then number three is equal to 13. When I divide three by 13, I get 6.5, which means my remainder would be one, which is not equal to zero. So I should not expect anything to be printed there. So the only thing that I should expect to see on the console is that's a negative number, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and save this, and then we're gonna boot up our server to check out the console on our browser. So I'm just gonna type in HTTP server, okay? And here it tells us where we can go ahead and open this at, so we can hit command or control. No, command click. Okay, and that opened it over here for me. So let me drag this over here. Okay, and then here I want to inspect. So I'm gonna right click because we're not gonna see anything here because remember we didn't write anything in the HTML. So I'm gonna hit inspect. Then I'm gonna go to my console and there we have it. That's a negative number. Okay, so it did as we expected it to do. Okay, now we can give it some more test results here. See, I wanna do check numbers, let's say 3,000, zero, and 14. Okay, so if we run through this out loud, I'm gonna comment this out so we don't get that result. I expect to see, wow, that's a big number because 
is greater than 100. I'm not going to expect to see that's a negative number because zero is not less than zero. And then I should expect to see that's an even number because 14 divided by two has a zero remainder because it goes in it seven times. Okay, so if I go ahead and save this and I refresh, we still get that same result. Okay, so this is something that is very common. Okay, so what happens is that it caches on the old data. So one thing to check before you start, you know, thinking that you wrote everything incorrectly, I want you to go to your sources and check your code. Okay. So here we can see in my script, it didn't add that new um, check numbers um, example I gave. Remember, I commented this one out and then I added this one. So it didn't register that new information. So what we're gonna have to do is right click where it has this reload page, right click it and do empty cache and hard reload. Give it some time. Okay, so now in my sources, I can see that it has my updated code. So now if I go to my console, I get what I expected. Wow, that's a big number that's an even number okay so that's how we can check the console through the server um, by up uh, through the browser by uh, booting our server excuse me got tongue tied there um, but there's another way that we can check it we can just use node um, in order to treat our terminal as a console so i'm going to go ahead and close my server here by hitting Control c and i can go ahead and run node space and then the name of the file script.js and there we have the output here so you can treat the terminal as a console so when you're working quickly and you want to just check things quickly I would highly recommend um, doing it through the terminal um, if you want to connect it and you need to boot your server and there's some HTML involved um, then most definitely you're going to want to run your server so now that that has been solved, are there any questions? All right, so it doesn't seem like there's any questions, but if you do come up with a question, feel free to message me on Slack and I'd be more than happy to answer that for you. Thanks again for coming by and I hope you have a good day.